Yes, people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCola. So it's the morning after the night before where Manchester United were absolutely embarrassed, humiliated, were pathetic at Old Trafford against Bournemouth. A 3-0 defeat, one of the most embarrassing results I've witnessed at Old Trafford. And there's been a fair few in the last 10 years. But Jesus, that was really, really, really bad. The manager spoke after the game. We'll be getting some of his quotes. We'll also be looking at some of the back pages. And I'll just be giving you my general thoughts on how things are going for Manchester United at the minute. They're obviously not going well. The pressure that's building a mountain on Eric Ten Hag. We'll get stuck into all of that. Before we do, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. You're liking this video, you're commenting, you're sharing, etc. Hitting that subscribe button helps us massively. So if you haven't hit it yet, get hitting that subscribe button. And also on the 28th of December, not far away now, um, we're, we're live in Dublin with Wes Brown, myself, Jay, Joe and Steve are all live in Dublin with Wes Brown. So make sure you come and join us just after Christmas. It'll be a laugh. So 28th of December, the link's in the description below. We'll see you there. But let's get stuck into what is happening at the moment at Manchester United, at Old Trafford. Eric Ten Hag says the squad is, quote, not good enough after defeat by Bournemouth. Uh, the Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag said the humiliating 3-0 home Premier League defeat by Bournemouth left him annoyed and disappointed and admitted his side were not good enough to be consistent as their season lurched into another bout of soul-searching. The latest setback is as bad as any experience during Ten Hag's tenure, with skipper Bruno Fernandes calling the performance not acceptable. Ten Hag, meanwhile, described United's start as no good and poor. We'd fallen behind to Dominic Solanke's fifth-minute effort. We never really seriously threatened to equalise. Um, and that's what it says in the article as well. Coming seven days after the performance at Newcastle that was roundly condemned, it raised serious questions over the assurances Ten Hag delivered around the midweek uh, win over Chelsea that United were moving forward. Asked if his current squad could achieve the consistency required of an elite team. He said, as a squad, we are not good enough to be consistent. I'm annoyed, disappointed, definitely. I expected something different. The way we started was no good. It was poor. Um, and he's bang on. He's bang on. We've now lost 11 games in all competitions this season. The same as they have won. Um, this was their seventh defeat in 16 matches in the league. And we've gone behind in half of those 16 games and conceded nine goals in the first half hour at matches at Old Trafford in all competitions. Now, look, this is a good uh, Bournemouth side in the, out of the last 15 points. So we've got 13. Fantastic. But Manchester United were rubbish. Rubbish, spineless, gutless, soulless. Just watching that game, you were just left there thinking, what is going on? Um, and there's so many different things that we've spoken about before and we've touched on in the past and all those different things. But you're looking out there and you're going, you've got Andre Onana in goal. We brought him in to play football. He's going long. If you're going to get him to do that, why didn't we keep David De Gea? So why have we brought in a player and got him playing against the way that he plays best? Then we went into the defence. We had Luke Shaw at centre-back. He's just come back. Now, I know he's played there and played there well before, but he's just come back. We hadn't had our first choice left back. Maybe you could try, you know, stick him in his normal position. He's also not been playing very well. We need to get him playing well. He's playing him out of position of right choice, especially when you've got Varane on the bench. And we're not picking him because of angles. Harry Maguire deserves to start ahead of him, apparently. And Harry Maguire's been excellent. You know, he got player of the month. He's done well. But ultimately, we're still conceding goals left, right and centre. Conceded four against Copenhagen, three against Galatasaray, three against Bournemouth. Rafael Varane is sitting on the bench. He's a far superior defender. Why isn't he playing? Why isn't he playing? It makes no sense. We want to garner this style of play and we want to do this, that and the other. Yet we've got the goalkeeper that we brought in to play football going long. We've got a defender who's better at playing out from the back sitting on the bench. We've got our left back playing at centre back. You know, we've got an emergency full back playing. And occasionally he looks better than anyone we've signed. You've got Diogo Delo who's hit and miss, inconsistent. The midfield ahead of him, I really don't know what's going on. Kobe Maino's coming, done really well. Doesn't play against Bournemouth, seemed like the perfect game for him. Hannibal Mabry came in a couple of months ago, scored a goal, did all right, showed some spark, some, some enthusiasm. Not been seen since. 
Amrabat playing well. Did all right last game. Looked like our best player in this one. But guess what? He'll probably be the one that's dropped for next game. Meanwhile, Scott McTominay plays every single week. He can't pass. He gets about 10 touches a game. And, and because he can crash the box, get into the final third, score a few goals, which he's done and done well in a few games, you can use him as an impact sub for that. He's not a midfielder. He never will be. He can't pass wind. Why do we keep starting him? So again, it goes, where's this style of play that you're thinking of? Because you're giving up control in midfield by playing McTominay. And then you play Bruno next to him, who takes risks, takes chances and all that. Cool. But if you've got Scott McTominay standing next to our striker while it's happening, we've literally got one man in midfield. Head scratchers all over the place. Now, yes, we've got injuries. Lissandro Martinez, Mason Mount, Casemiro, etc. But even if they were there, like, I, I, I struggle to think it would be better. Lissandro Martinez is the one where I think he'd make a big, big difference. But we've had Casemiro at points, Mount at points. We've still not been playing well with them. So again, you're just left scratching your head. The front line, Garnacho's been excellent this season. He was a bit poor against Bournemouth. Really poor against Bournemouth. Why is Martial starting against, uh, ahead of Hoyland? Your guy's there on the bench. He needs to score some Premier League goals. He hasn't scored one yet. We've got Bournemouth at home. All due respect. Big chance for him to score a goal. He's on the bench. Why? Anthony's playing every, like now. He did all right in Galatasaray. And he did, but when I say he's doing all right, he's doing the basics. He's not very good either, is he? We spent eighty million pound on him, and you're just looking around and you're thinking, what is going on? What? And I know injuries have caused problems, but the manager has to get a grip of this. He has to get a hold of it because he's just—I don't know what's happened to him. Not seeing. You know, tactically in terms of football, or not seeing the same manager that was there last year. And I know there's pressures at Old Trafford. I know that the running of the club's not great and all those different things we can mention. But come on, man. The football has to be better. It has to be. Even if it's inconsistent. If I'm seeing glimpses of good football, you can go, we're working on something. But it's just gutless and the manager's making strange decisions that I just don't get. Look. I don't think he needs to be sacked. Although, we've got West Ham away, Liverpool away, so Bayern Munich coming. Like, wouldn't be surprised if he was by Christmas. I want some stability. I want him to be able to turn this around. You look at, like, other clubs give managers a little bit more time. This season's already a write-off. Are you going to bring another manager and get a spike? Like, who, who's even the manager? I'd like to see this guy given some opportunity to turn it around, given the time to turn it around. But help yourself out a little bit, Jesus, because we know what some of these like are at, and you pick them every week. Don't make sense. It don't. Anyway, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I didn't even do the news in the end. I've just had a little moan, haven't I? Like I don't want the manager sacked. I'm firmly behind him, but I'm sitting there thinking, what the hell is going on a lot of the time? Come on, Eric, man, sort you out. Anyway. Seen a bit.